Yo, what's going on guys? Today we're going to be doing a video recap of the Grand Blue 2019 Summer live stream, and we're going to be talking about many things that appeared in that live stream. This first video is going to be primarily around the primal upgrade and the new weapons that are coming in the Grand Blue very soon. Uh, I will be doing other videos in the future around units like the units they are getting four star, I mean five star, the limited ones like Catalina, Rackham, and the other things mentioned in the live stream. But for now, in this video, I want to really just focus on this one aspect of the game. One thing I want to mention at the very beginning of this, do not stone your primals out of reaction to the live stream. This is very important, right? While we know that the primals will be getting a four star, right? I don't want anyone to go instantly and stone them just out of pure reaction to the live stream. We do not know what is going to change with the four stars, right? They could change anything. They may not even update the passive and they'll may add a new passive to it. We do not know, but I do not want anyone to just instantly go and stone things without taking time to access what is the actual update don't buy into the hype i know primal four stars is a very very huge thing for this game right it's a big it could be possibly a very game breaking thing depending on how they approach it but just do not instantly go and stone primals wait until we get official numbers and go from there it's very important i know people tend to buy into the hype and instantly do things on impulse that's why i want to start this off with this vid uh i wanted to start this video off with this message just so people can understand that it's not a rush do not stone things instantly so keep that in mind now with that mention what do i think the primals are going to get right now we're going to take a look at the primals really quickly now the six of them obviously each for one element Hades, you, you probably know their bunch. I'm probably gonna go like this, I think. Best way to look at them. Uh, I think that's fine. They're, they're generally low level because they're still three stars, so it's easy to find them. Now, what I think is gonna happen, right? The very first update, I believe, is a call update. They mentioned that they're going to update the calls. Most of the primals, four out of the six, I believe, are the calls are almost useless. We have Zeus Call, which is a 1,000 barrier, I believe, maybe 1,500. I think it's 1,000 though, but it's a 1,000 barrier, which is almost like what, like an auto attack, I think. Like the barrier, you call this effect, and the barrier is gone in a minute. Now, I do uh, I believe they will update the barrier. I don't know if it'll be Grimnir levels, but I feel like it should be, right? Like. We already have a barrier summon that's so far out there that I feel like a primal like Zeus should be Grimnir level, but keep in mind you can recall it. So I feel like Grimnir levels may be a little, a tad bit too much. Now we have Titan. Titan is actually one of the better calls, right? I feel Titan's call is actually very good. I don't know if they're going to change them. Like if they just remove the 25% um, handicap, that alone makes this one of the best summons in the game. If they just remove this, they don't really have to change anything else. If they just remove the 25, that is a very huge update and it will make it so much better. Right now, the 25% is kind of hindering it and this is one of the best summons already. So the changing that little small feature right there and this summon is God like, God like. So that's one thing I would like personally. Um, now Hades, Hades is just asleep right now, right? And sleep is not bad, provided it hits, right? The only problem is that a lot of bosses in the game currently either have immunity to sleep or his sleep just completely misses because it has a very bad hit rate. What I can see them doing in the future is giving it coma, something like Neo and Joker, giving him coma. Now it does kind of make Joker irrelevant, but I feel like it's that's how the game goes, power creep, you know? So I feel like they should give it coma and a higher hit rate. That alone will make him a very reliable summon and an easy damage boost. Because, you know, coma does give you quite a bit of damage. 
Next, Agni. Now, Agni is in a weird situation, right? The burn is actually very good because of the Xenoax, so I do not want them to remove the burn effect because it does combo well with the Xenoax. What I would prefer on Agni is either bonus damage on a call. Um, I doubt that would ever happen, though. <laughs> I really doubt that would ever happen. <laughs> They, they may do it, it's possible, right? If they really wanna go out there and really push primals, they can give it a bonus damage on call. Um, they can do attack and defense boost, though I don't think that's that important. Um, they can also add a heal to it. I don't think that's important either. It doesn't really fit the fire, like you think of a burn god, right? If you think of the Agni raid, what did he does? He burns you a lot. Um, he has that special burn. So they, what they can do is give him like a, uh, what, what the, what's the the angels? You know how the angels have that unique debuff where they do like quite a bit of damage over time. Um, I forgot what it's called. It's like the, the, the two angels with the double attack boost passive. Hal and Mal, I think. Um, they can give him a unique debuff where it's unremovable. And um, it's still burned though. Because if, if they remove the burn, it's going to lose that interaction with the Xenoax. So I, I really don't want them to remove the burn. But um, they can give them a unique debuff that's unspellable. Uh, I do think that may break it a little bit. Because especially when you keep in mind that you already have Shiva doing that. So I don't know. I don't think that would work too well. It's kind of weird. I think Agni is in the, probably the hardest slot right now because of that. Like I don't. I really don't know what they can really do with Agni right now we're like they already have shiva right so shiva already does kind of that and i if he, they give him a um permanent debuff he, he may not interact with shiva well i i really don't know how they're going to do it but i am curious to see what they go with in the future now arguably the best call out of every primal is zeph but there's one big problem with Zeph is that he has competition in his own element, being Hamsaw. Hamsaw, the uh, the goose, the goose, it's a goose, right? It's a duck. I don't remember. I think it's a duck. But the duck um, gives sharp attack down, attack and defense, and the spell. So already we have the spell in the same LD as Zeph. So at the bare mem, I feel like they should put it on the same level as as Hamsaw. I don't know if they will. Um, the spell in itself is already really good. They can just sort of cool down on it and give it like, um, I don't know, attack boost or something like that. Or <laughs> mirror image, cause you know, everything needs mirror image in freaking water. I mean, wind, right? If you haven't noticed like what, four summons with mirror image on it, with Garuda, um, Tiamat, uh, Raphael, there's a lot of mirror image, the mirror image on summons and, and wind. So I would not be surprised if they give it this mirror image and play off. Oh, okay, here it is. But I do feel like um, because this while this call is very good, since he has competition in his own element, they're going to really need to go out there to match it. So I, this one could be really, really strong. It's already strong as it is but it could be even stronger because it has to match the competition in its own element. Not many summons here have competition in their own Ellie like that. So I do wonder how they're going to do it. Are they going to try to power creep Hamsaw or are they going to make Zeph as strong as it? Or are they going to make it weaker? And last but not least, we have Varuna. Now Varuna, it's good, right? I'm lying to you, it's not good. Varina needs a big buff. I don't want a permanent debuff on Varina, but in sense right now, there's only one permanent debuff character on water and she's currently an Oracle. So if they were to give this a permanent debuff, something like I mentioned with, with um, Agni, I'll be perfectly fine with it because I don't ever plan on making that unit like ever, so for a long time. So I would be perfectly fine if they gave Varina this perma debuff, like 10% at attack and defense down and damage over time. That'd be good enough for me. Now, depending on your situation, you may feel that's a little bit too much or too little, but I feel like having a perma debuff fixes a couple uh, problems right now in water. So that's my opinion. Now, 
as I mentioned, those are like what I believe is going to happen. You're probably also wondering what I feel is a possibility with the uh, the passive. I didn't even talk about it, but I'll talk about the passive. I actually kind of forgot the passive. It's probably the thing that people care about the most. <laughs> I didn't even like talk about it. Now the aura or the passive, what you want to call it. Now the aura. Um, so I heard it mentioned, right? People <laughs> on the like crazy end, 150. Do you understand how game breaking that would be? <laughs> you already see like the the pure power of strength builds in the 120 rent and the 120 generation, right? Just imagine having like oh 150. One, 150? That is so out there that if they were to actually go that deep into primal, you pretty much may as well not even look at Magna. Like, Every even free to play primals would just dominate Magnus so hard. Cause you gotta remember, right? This buff, right, to the primal, whatever buff it may be, it could be 125, 130, 145, 140, anything, right? This only gets even stronger when you combine it with the Dark Opus, right? Because the Dark Opus is the strongest weapon in the game, having the highest modifiers of one single weapon. That weapon alone boosted by 140 or 150 can literally be stronger than Magnus. Is that is that ridiculous? And then when you double boost it with two primals, yeah, let's not go that let's let's let's, let's tone it back a little bit, jump back. 150 is I I feel that's ridiculous. Let's jump back a little bit. I don't believe that's a possibility. But if if by some magical world Karamar loses his mind and he was like, you know what guys, we need power in Grand Blue. People want to hit numbers that are unfathomable, numbers we've never seen before in Grand Blue. That's what we need. Yeah, I'm going to have to tell everybody to make a, like, ignore every GW character. Make Opus. <laughs> like, <laughs> you don't need GW characters anymore. Just make the Primal Opus and your one LE and then you're good to go. <laughs> it would it would legit get to that point and it's already getting to that point right now so i really don't think 150 is really feasible now what i what i think about in worst case scenario right let's say worst case scenario i feel what they're going to do is they're going to have the 120 right the 120 is going to stay there but they'll add a new effect right so like 120 boost to light and thunder and you know, all that right then they have like a little slash 10% boost to HP for light allies. Something like that. Um, the reason I mention this is that right now, Fa is like the, the standard, right? And you you know how Fa has the 30k entry fee, right? You gotta pay that 30k fee at the start of the raid. You pay your fee and you get hit. They may want to make it the promote that people should run primals for that raid and what they're gonna do is give you more health. That alone is already a buff in itself because, you know, you already get, you get more health for free and you get you don't get no more damage but you already have generally high damage and that could be enough for most ellies right uh, that's a worst case scenario i don't believe that's going to happen though but in the worst case scenario i can see it happening now what also could happen is that they jump it up to 125. 125 is not a huge boost right but it's a boost you gotta keep in mind when like when they when they buff these summons, right? When they put them to four star, that this enables double primals even harder. If you haven't noticed, the game has already been going towards double primals. You got double Varna, double Hades, double Zeph, double Zeus, Zeus, right? All these double primal builds are just very common already. So the fact that they, they buff one, they buff in two technically, because people run double already, right? People don't really run, oh, Varina Europa, not very common build. You're running that because you don't have either Varina or a good enough grid. That's how it goes. So because of that, if they buff one, you're they're really just buffing two. And then if they're buffing two, they got to tone back because of how strong it's going to be, right? So that's my opinion. I don't believe like it's going to be 150 at all. But... I, I am more towards the low end where it's like either a health boost or a very small boost. We'll see in the future, but I feel like, <laughs> like don't get too overhyped because if you get hit with that disappointment and slap you across the face, 
it's gonna be you're gonna be very sad so just have a like think about the current game state and just have a realistic opinion towards it if you have anything you want to comment about leave it in the comments which we could talk about it um but that's my opinion on primals that took 15 minutes <laughs> and i'm not i haven't even talked about the weapons yet so let's get to the weapons because you know this video is gonna be a long one and i hope you guys can enjoy it um and give opinions on it and spark conversation about what you guys think about primals now